It's all about humanity. It's all about humanity. Shoes. Okay, mate, we got a few hard on today. We've got Kvyat and the two willies to come hard. Everybody else with a free choice is medium, apart from Jim and Atsy, who's gone soft. Thank you for the very precise information, Jeff.
wheel. Somebody tell him to give it to me. Come on! Move! Validates many laps in quali. Kirby probably spins at turn five. Someone cuts the chicane. And P.S. Pete Will has a horrible one. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to SFR Season 4, Round 16, here live from the Hongara Ring. My name is Kieran Wright, 92, and I am joined, as normal, on a Saturday evening by the main man himself, the one, the only... T S so easy. Good evening, Twice. Good evening, Karen. Thank you very much. Your intros just keep on getting better. Love them. <laughs> how are you, my friend? And how are you tonight? I'm looking forward to some spectacular SFR action from Hungary. Indeed, indeed, we shall. Hopefully, get some very, very good action. You can see the guys in the lobby now. Uh, just waiting for the last few drivers to jump in. We do apologise for the little slight delay that we did have at the start of the stream. Unfortunately, Jane was a little bit delayed getting home from work, so it did cause a slight delay to the uh, 
to the lobby. But we are all in now. And we are all looking good, of course. Because let's go to Home Grand Prix. So we mm -hmm. are here in Hungary. This is the Home Grand Prix for Kiz Let's Go in the Mercedes. So we'll be looking to see a uh, strong performance from Kiz Let's Go tonight. Uh, we did have Cam in chat earlier. I did ask him for a prediction. And he said, ooh, that's a hard one. So he couldn't give us a prediction. Uh, apologies if people struggled to hear that Top Gear intro. Um, I'm not sure what happened there because my, uh, my mic was set up. Pretty much at the same level it's at now and i'm pretty sure if i look at my sound yeah i'm peaking pretty fine so i'm not sure what happened there but i do apologize if you guys um, didn't hear that unfortunately top hopefully it might have just been on on the clerk sign and the rest heard it fine hopefully 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 so we're about five minutes out from the start of uh, quality uh here we go ready up hat 10 past just as i say that so we've got five minutes guys before we do start getting underway. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick recap of last week's race. For those who may have missed last week, uh, we were at Austria. We were in the Styrian Hills of Austria. And if you guys did miss that stream, you can now go to the SFR YouTube channel. And you can watch the whole stream from last Saturday night back in its entirety, in its glory. Where the SFR intro, of course, made its debut here in SFR. So please guys go over, go and give it a watch, drop the channel with a subscription whilst you are over there as well. We're going to try and see if we can pump as many videos and as much content as we can from SFR side of things into that YouTube channel. And we're going to look to try and make everything as streamlined and as wonderful as it can be. <laughs> Would go now but I'm running around my house at the moment. That's fair enough Jamie. That is fair enough, mate. It's not a problem at all. So get the events list up there on my mobile Deviche. So we're all good there. So yeah, last week in um, Austria, as we did briefly mention there, it was again the uh, the podium that we've we've come to notice a lot, Swayze, in SFR. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we obviously, you know, we've got a lot of good drivers, but there are a few drivers in this league that are really exceptional. And, you know, I'm not going to name names because we all know who they are and we all, you know, they're as good as each other. I'm not going to say one's better than the other. It all comes down to each week, look, favourite tracks and everything like that. So, yeah, you know, the podium has been a little bit consistent. Hopefully, you know, we'll get another shake up soon. I mean, and Hungary, it could be go. It could very well replicate last week in Austria, where we get rain. It's a track that it can and does happen at quite often. So, a mixed conditions race could go down the treat for me tonight. I think again, Kieran. Yeah, I wonder whether Vapid's done his rain dances. He said that he was doing his rain dance last week for Austria, and he got what he wanted. So, I wonder if he's doing his rain dance again this week to try and get some more rain here in Hungary. But for those who did what uh, miss last week's race. Uh, it was the 1-2-3 in the Drivers' Championship. That was the 1-2-3 on track on the night. Constant Ryan did win the race, uh, followed by Vapid Coup with T.S. Leclerc coming in in third place. So if I was wondering what that does to the championship standings, we have only got five races left, including tonight. So with five races to go, Constant Ryan does lead the Drivers' Championship with 283 points. That's what we'll do, make it a little bit easier for you guys to see it. Give you a little visual uh, representation as well. So Constant Ryan leads the Drivers' Championship by 200, with 283 points. Uh, 43 points ahead of Vapid Coot, who is currently sitting in second place. With 240. With um, Mr. T.S. Leclerc sitting just behind with 185. Why has that not transitioned over? That's why that hasn't transitioned over. Because I haven't mm. done that. Helps if I push the right buttons on Streamlabs. So it actually transitions it over. There we I go. Mean, now you can see it all. We can see the right on screen. I mean, Ryan has quite a comfortable lead at the moment. But it's still not, you know, it's still within mathematically possible chances for Rapid Coot 
to win this championship at the moment. You know, something could go horribly wrong for Ryan, so nothing's out of the question yet. No, definitely for sure. So we've got five races left. So you can see at the top of the screen the five races we do have left are here in Hungary. Next week we will be in Canada. And then we will be over in Spain at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, followed by Azerbaijan. And then we will have our season finale in Great Britain at the world famous Silverstone Circuit. Mr. Leclerc has made a very, very good point in the chat. The ACC League, the Assetto Corsa Competizione League that SFR will be running on a Friday night is starting to take shape quite nicely if you guys do want to get involved in that if you are already part of the discord please 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 make sure that you hit up either tes leclerc or tes big wolf those will be the guys that will uh, get you involved in everything concerning acc there is a sign up sheet in the discord server for you guys to be able to fill in to get yourselves involved in the acc league that will be on a Friday night. And then, of course, we will have SFR F1 on a Saturday. Uh, if my memory serves me correctly, we've got a 12-race calendar in the ACC League. And we will be traveling all around the world in a set of course at competition. So if you like GT racing, if you like racing in GT3 cars, then make sure you get involved in that ACC League. If you're not part of the Discord, head over to the SFR Discord Hopefully, Moobot will post the uh, message quite quickly. In fact, I've seen Moobot post it quite recently, so I will drop that like that. And there is the Discord link there, guys. So if you do want to jump into the Discord, if you aren't already part of the Discord, as you can see, the drivers now, well, you can't see them yet, but you will see them. Not that one, that one. Now readying up and getting ready to go racing here in qualifying. But yeah, be sure to head over to the Discord, join join the Discord, get yourself involved in the ACC League. You can hear those world famous beeps. Uh, this League needs drivers. Um, I mean, if you want to get involved, Liam, you are more than welcome to, bud. Come and join the Discord. Have a chat with some of the guys in the Discord. Up. Fill in the sign-up forms, and we will definitely look to try and get you in, buddy. We've only got five races left in the season. Um, but of course we will be carrying on into next year's game and beyond. So we were supposed to have 12, but unfortunately, so is, I think our short qualifying is basically a Q3, mate. We've got 10 drivers. It's unfortunate, and you know, it is what it is towards the end of the season. Obviously the new beaters out, you know, people are, are really at the end of the wits with this game now, with the way it you know, it's, it's, it's had its faults online, and we all know what they are. So, you know, I think it's getting to that point now where people are just wanting this to wrap up and move on to the new game. Indeed. Uh, no, Liam, it's not. It is not pace based, mate. We have one tier. That's it. One tier, one league. That is it. One division. Everyone races against one another in SFR. If you want to get involved, there we go. Andrew and Kira are running late. So we will have 12 eventually. We are just waiting for A. Jackson and Kira to get themselves home from wherever they are. Wherever it is that they may be, hopefully they will be with us shortly. Um, and then that will take us up to a 12-car lobby, which should hopefully make for... <laughs> You wanted rain, Trace! You wanted oh, rain! We <laughs> let, let, I wanted, let, this is what I wanted last week. None of the inters crap. Let's get that full wet out there. <laughs> now it really is a flashback for Will. Oh, yes. <laughs> so for those who don't know what that means, um, in, the, cool. <laughs> in, uh, in the intro, there was oh, a... Uh, the, the, in the Top Gear intro, there was a little bit of a, uh, a uh, homage paid TTS Big Will, courtesy of Swayze, um, telling us that um, Will was apparently going to suffer a horrible flashback. Uh, Swayze, do you want to um, <laughs> let the people know what that Elaborate. was? Elaborate. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, in season 12 here, this race was uh, rerun, and it was right at the end. Obviously, it was in a fight with Storm for the championship. Um, it was a full wet race. Um, 
and just after the turn five, our admin over here. Did had I a go for it? Did I send it? On the or curb did I and uh, did it send it? Yeah. Oh, send it! Wall, which he claims was invisible. I mean, obviously, I can't tell because apparently it's invisible, you know. <laughs> but uh, I did have a front row view from directly behind him. <laughs> I wonder how quickly. I always like to remind him of it. Yeah, I wonder how quickly Will's gonna uh, hate you for that and uh, make some sort of comment in normal Will fashion. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, he has put in the chat that it is a dry race, though. It is gonna be a dry race, so. But of course that does that will make it inter a little bit interesting because you know, it's gonna give even if we have ten, it will give the top ten free tire choice. It will give the top 10 free time. Full course. Qualifying. And of course, you then also have to take into account setups. What setup do these drivers go for? Knowing that it's a dry race, do you just bank on that dry setup and yeah, just you, you, take you the hit and call it? I feel My like God. you have to do it. What do the drivers do? You can't set it up for qualifying and then suffer through. I think it's you know, quite a lot of that. Oh my god, guys, we did it again! Oh my god, yes! We just do too many laps to suffer through on, on the wrong side. We just won the race! We have set up for the dry race and suffer the wet qualifying. So we have got our first flying laps being done now. Kislesko at his home Grand Prix in the Mercedes. Coming around that very, very horrible turn five that Swayze was. Mentioning with a uh, will flashback, but uh, yeah, Gisleska has no there. such issues coming up through the chicane now. He, he actually there. made it around the turn five, all right. It was on the exit, he just got high on the outside curb on the exit. We'll see now through the uh, the twisty turny S bend section of sector two up before the uh, the double hairpin, which will end this lap. Because Lesko living looking pretty smooth, I will say, so he's uh, not had any wobbles, really. He's... We have got a yellow flag in Sector 3, though. I think that's just someone moving out of the way. With one of the Renaults moving out of the way of Kislesko. Possibly Kirby, I would assume, seeing as Kirby is on an outlap. Kislesko is going to set the time to beat. The time to beat is a 130.792. <laughs> Well, I mean, I can't tell, I mean, tell you at the moment if that's good or bad. I mean, honestly, I, I can't remember <laughs> four wet times around here. Can well, comes in, 131.1. Vapid Coup, 129.7. Because Lesko, time to me, you know, that's a good time, considering who's around him there, you know, he's looking good. Yeah, it is indeed. Tom I do like a wet qualifying, it can really shake up the starting grid. Even if you don't get a full wet race, you know, you still get... That extra bit of spice where people would normally be a bit higher, have had bad qualifying and having to work their way through a field. Yeah, Will crosses the line, 131.5. Tom Gorian now. Uh, in fact, Constant Ryan, I think, is going to cross the line. No, it's going to be Papa Goose is going to cross the line just before Tom Gorian. Papa Goose goes P5. Tom Gorian goes P2. A 130.5. Very, very good lap there by Tom. Uh, we'll see what Kirby is. Who's the head? Kirby or Constant Ryan? No, Constant Ryan. 29.6. Constant Ryan is always ahead. <laughs> <laughs> constant Ryan doing Constant Ryan things and putting himself at the top of the timing screens. Let's see what Kirby gets up to in Kirby's first lap. Coming around the penultimate corner now. Running up towards the final long hairpin now. And now on the run up to the line. Kirby well, crosses the line. Some of the drivers do two laps without pitting, two or three laps here without pitting. Yep, 131.759 there from uh, Kirby. Because Lesko doesn't improve on their time. It's no, 9 tenths slower. Vapid does. Vapid does indeed, a 29.3 by Vapid. Let's see what Will uh, is up to. I think that to. was Cam just behind him, but he didn't seem to improve. Is Will going to come out and do another one? Will is. Looking like he's coming up for another lap. I don't think he's going to improve too much, though. It's maybe There's a lot of standing lap. water there on the outside around that corner. And look at all the standing water there down the inside of that street near the pit wall. Yeah, there is a lot of standing water there. So, uh, I, can, I can expect some uh, some death. I'm not going to lie. 
Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think they're doing all right at the moment. We're only obviously we're not far into the qualifying session, but of course we do have drivers out there, you know, who run no traction and respect to those drivers who can run no traction in this condition because that's on a skill level that I can't compete on. Yeah, definitely. So Leclerc and Christo are about, well, Leclerc is on his first hot lap. Christo is just about to start his now. There we go. I'm going to see what Kirby is up to. Kirby is up on his time. Three tenths up at the moment. We'll look to try and overtake his teammate, Big Will. Kirby on the run up to the line now. Crosses the line. A 131.4 and does indeed go faster than Big Will. That's Kirby up to P6. Yeah, and I think Will's down on his time at the moment. And Vapid goes faster again. Either that or... Yeah, no, no, no he, did. Yeah, yeah, he, did he definitely again. went faster. <laughs> he definitely went faster. Let's see what Mr. Will is up to. I think Will's going to come into the pits now. Yeah, he is. Will comes into the pits. See what T.S. Leclerc can get up to. Coming around this penultimate corner now. Very nice line staying in the driest line possible you can clearly see on the track you know where the where the where the racing line is in the wet yeah and the cloud crosses the line 129 999 puts him in third it's a good time for him the clerk there straight into the back one at the moment a potential interesting decision by kislesko here twice he's gone twinters he's not left the pits yet but he has put a set of intermediate tires on his car i mean if you think it's slowing down is it worth a shot? Yeah, because what's the if you've, dry, if you've got a dry race, it's not like you're going to be stuck on the wrong tyre. <laughs> True. Big sideways moment there by Christo as he comes around the final corner. And that is why Christo has set a 138.7 as his first lap time. I mean, he's got that banker lap in on the wet, because let's go. So at least if he crashes while he is out on the inter, he's already got a semi decent time in. He has in. Indeed, Tumbora McCann is coming into the pits. I'm going to assume, let's have a look at Jamie's second sector split time. See if he's up or down. He is up on his time. So we'll stay with Leclerc to see if he does improve and does decide to finish off this lap. He comes up to the penultimate corner now. A very very nice line through that penultimate corner as, as Swayze did mention you can see the dry line that is forming on track these drivers really trying to make sure they stay within that dry line oh Leclerc did have a little bit of a wobble there of course, the line I mean I wouldn't say it's seven. a dry line I just say it's the line with no standing water yeah, on. <laughs> a drying line we'll say welcome back Alfie okay I've been watching kids let's go all the way around on his art lap and he hasn't had many major moments where he seems to have put the power down too hard or too fast on the inters and they seem to have lost grip. He seems to be coping all right. I just don't know whether they're going to be much faster. There's a lot of drivers that are now starting to go onto those intermediate tyres. Tom Gorin has also come out on those intermediates. Vapid has fitted the uh, inters, as has Cam W as well. Because his let's go is now on his, just started his initial hot lap on the inters. So. Let's ride on board I'll let with you know Kislesko. when he gets to the. Yeah, we'll see at the. We'll see, I think the first sector will give us a, 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 the idea of whether the changeover is correct. That is up. He is up. He is indeed up. Vapid comes out onto an outlap as well, as does Will. So, despite there being a fair bit of water still falling on track, a fair bit of rain falling. Yes. Drivers are uh, it's still coming down. taking the gamble, but well, the potential gamble on these inters, but uh, we'll see here through this uh, twisty turny section where you really want to try and maintain as much grip as you can in those tyres. Because it, it, it looks solid on the curve. He's, he's over a second up. He's over a second yeah, up. This is definitely inters now, then, definitely. I mean, look at it, the car looks solid on the curves. It doesn't even look like it's sliding on the wet curves at all, so... I see that this could be a very, very good lap here by Kislesko. This could put him on provisional pole. I say provisional pole because, of course, everyone else around him has now put the intermediate tyres on as well. Kislesko does cross the line of 129 dead. 
and that does put him pole as it stands. Tom Gorian is on. Oh, Tom Gorian's had a bit of a moment there. He has had a bit of a moment there in turn, coming out of turn three. A little wobble, so that is going to affect his time. Yeah, he's a second and a half yeah. down now. Mad turtle a little bit there as well. Quite possibly. Quite possibly. He's the next on a, on a lap there with Tom Gorman, isn't he? He is, yep. So we shall see how he does. As you can see he is really, really struggling here, Tom Gorian. Doesn't seem to have that grip that Kislesko seems to have on his setup. Although he's made a bit he has made a fair bit of time back though. He was one he was about a second and a half down after sector one. He's now only half a second down. So he has made up some time on those intermediate tyres. I think, you know, I think at the moment it looks like the track is just getting drier at the moment. Well, then again, that's it. In that sector there, it does look like the rain's heavier than it does at the bottom end of the street. Yeah. See Tom Gorian now on the run, up to the line, crosses the line, only just slower than his best time on those full wets. He does stay in the yeah, five, though. He did have some form of moment which obviously cost him time in sector one because he did, he did purple one and two. Let's see who we got. Where's Mr. Will? I believe Will? it'll be Vapid next about to come over the line. It is Vapid. 127.674 by Vapid. Yeah, it's not a problem, Alfie. Enjoy your life, my friend. Cricket. Christo is on an outlap. Big Will is just coming around the final corner. See whether Will can improve. Will does improve by nearly a second into P6. Kirby just behind. Oh no, Kirby is invalidated. My Kirby apologies. Has invalidated, unfortunately. See what uh, Mr. Constant Ryan can get himself up to. Because if Vap is at a 27.6, we both know what Constant Ryan's lap times can be like. So it'll be interesting to see what a sort of time Ryan can I did can see set. a purple Q for Ryan. C.F. Leclerc starting a hot lap now. Constant run, run up to the line. 27-1. Oh, that's half a second. Half a second <laughs> faster than Vapid. Jeez. You know, Ryan's driving is just constant, isn't it? He is constant. Lee at the front. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. He is constant. Lee up there with those fast lap times. Cam is just about to start a hot lap now. So we will keep an eye on that. Papa Goose crosses the line on 136.5. Which does go a fair bit slower than his time. On I sports. think Ryan's going again because he's just purpled one. Let's see what Christo's up to. Christo's nearly two seconds up on his lap time as it stands. Of course he did have that, did have that massive, massive twitch coming out of the final corner. Didn't have as many issues this time. Crosses the line, 131, dead. Literally dead. dead. Good man. <laughs> as dead as you can get. 131, 0, 0, 0. And that moves Christo up to P7. Kirby comes into the pits, having invalidated. <coughs> Let's see what Colston Ryan can do. What Colston Ryan is up again on his he time, but does come into the pits. He was a sec. He was, he was a tenth up. up, yeah. Leclerc goes second, 127.657 for T.S. Leclerc. Not much in it between Bapid and uh, Leclerc there, that's very, very tight between the two of them. You can see Kislesko now coming out onto another outlap. We are coming into the last three minutes now of, or uh, well, last two and a half minutes, sorry, of qualifying here in Hungary. Where is Papa Goose? Can he improve? <laughs> Cam just making the final corner now on a hot lap, he's not invalidated yet, so Cam coming up to the line, Cam crosses the line, goes P4, 127.758, let's see what Papa Goose can do, 129.078 by Papa Goose, goes a thousandth of a second faster than Kislesko, who has just started another hot lap set. I mean, Kislesko's time earlier was impressive, um, I think he's got the potential to be faster than his current time. Yep, he was, was the first through. runner out there on the intermediate, so he was the testy. Obviously, the track should have got faster since his time. So, Leclerc with a purple sector two. 
see whether Leclerc does decide to finish the lap. He is going to finish the lap. Comes around the final corner now. Don't want to get on the power too early because it will cause you to spin. Now you put the power down. Run up to the line of 27.256. It's enough to stay. Good P2. improvement. It is an improvement. Keeps him P2. He is, what, 11 hundredths of a second? No, 11 tenths of a second. Yeah, 11 tenths off of constant minus time. Yeah, you know, I mean, he, he was on, like I said, he was on 27.6 with Vapid, so into a 27.2. It's a good improvement. As I think there is the improvement as kids let's go into third place with a 127.6. Yeah, very, very good lap there by Kiz Lesko. Tungorian is on a hot lap. Christo has retired from the session. Mm -hmm. Kirby's on an out lap. See if we've got where. Constant Ryan's just about to start his final lap. So we'll keep an eye on that as the rest of the session progresses. Let's see if we've got anyone else who is due to finish a lap. Yeah, I'm not sure Tom going to start. Just starting one. Um, and uh, looks like Leclerc's going around again. He is actually going to cross the line again. Let's see what Leclerc can do. Does he improve on his time? Runs up to the line. Improves oh, by half a second. What is he six seven? Where has he pulled that from? Where has he just pulled that from? What a lap by Leclerc as the flag drops. So these are going to be the final chances for people. Cam is invalidated. Because Lesko is coming around the penultimate corner now. About to hit the final corner. Let's see what Kiz Lesko can do. See if he can uh, try and put a dent into that 26-7 that Leclerc did hit. Because Lesko crosses the line, improves, but not enough. Stays P3. Honestly, Karen, did you know that the, that the Alpha Tori came with a changing room fitted? <laughs> Jamie's just reached into the locker for that one. He really has. Papa Goose and Cam both invalidating, unfortunately. Vapid. In fact, Kirby's just ahead of Vapid, so we'll see what Kirby can do. And then we will jump to Vapid. Kirby comes around the final corner, now run up to the line for Kirby. Kirby improves by 3.7 seconds. That is enough for P6. Vapid comes into the pit. Vapid did invalidate Constant Ryan. Goes pole 25 7. The track must still be getting drier and drier somehow, even though it looks like it's still 25 7. That's an insane time. Tom Gorian goes third 26 9. Holy smokes. That is fast. Leclerc comes across the line. Does improve. Not enough to catch Constant Ryan though. And that way is going to bring us to the end of quality. I think that uh, was a case of uh, almost, you know, obviously for, for the clerk at that point, that would have been his third lap on that set of tyres just then. Uh, for Ryan, it was a brand new set. Uh, case of uh, almost the last car across the line was going to extract the most from the track in that qualifying session. Yeah, indeed it was. So this is your...
fine for us, um, whether they're on the medium or the hard, I feel like it's the mediums all one stop and go to the hards, the hards all one stop and go to the mediums. So um, it's just going to be a case of which strategy is going to be more beneficial at the moment. So there we go. Ah, so Jamie was, uh, I think the uh, the intro video may have helped Jamie as well. Because <laughs> Jamie was doing insulin at the same time that we were having our little break and playing the SFR intro. You can see now the drivers are getting ready to get this race underway. Thomas and Ryan will now have been taken over by the game. Nice to see there's no one lagging too far behind in this formation lap. Of course, we have only got 10 drivers. So all the drivers need to do, really, to get points tonight is finish the race race. Easier said than done. There's a few curbs out there that will kill you. Indeed it is. So here we go. You can see the strategies there on screen. Medium to hard, painting lap 16 to 23. We are going to wait for those five red lights. Three, four, five red lights are on. And they are out and away we go here in Hungary. And no, you're what? Behind the hands, Tom Gorey like, has got off to yeah. an absolute storming start here. He was on the mediums. Why is one of the drivers that's on the mediums with a couple of hards in front of him? He is indeed. He's been able to jump quite a few places. Leclerc has not had a good start to the race. So Leclerc has dropped back a few places here. Leclerc down to fourth now. Yeah, he's just gone around the, the fifth, inside sorry, there. Fifth, sorry, actually, nice behind move Bafford. Bafford. So you see everything just start to sort itself out now. There we go. That is your actual running order, ladies and gents. Constant Ryan leading the Grand Prix, Cam in second, Tom Gorin up into third, Vapid in fourth, and Leclerc currently in fifth position. Oh, Cam has a little bit of a moment there as we were riding on hang board on with Tom minute. Gorin. See what? Hang on. Hold up. Oh, Swayze has, has seen something or noticed something. I'll let Swayze investigate and he will uh, feed back with his response very, very soon. Yeah, no. How did I I'm sorry. I'm just looking, Cam's just gained four places in yeah. second. That's legitimate. I mean, that's a great start from yeah. Cam. That's insane. Yeah, what Cam had an absolutely stonking start. And on the hard tyre as well. Mm -hmm. that's, I've got to say, that is very impressive. So, Constant Ryan says the 122 9 first lap of the Grand Prix. We are on lap two, not lap three, guys. Please ignore what you can see in the top left hand corner of the screen. DRS has not been enabled. I will promise you that now. DRS has not been enabled yet. We are still only on lap two, not lap three. It is a visual glitch by the Codemasters gamers. We still have blue flags being waved around track. I don't know why we have blue flags being waved around track. We're literally on the second lap of the race. No one's a lap down. A silly game. As we're going to get the timing glitch. <sighs> Gotta love that timing glitch from Cody's. Let's jump down and see what Big Will is up to. He's trying to hunt, uh, hunt down Papa Goose. Uh, Big Will has not had uh, the best of starts to the Grand Prix, unfortunately, dropping down to 10th place on the start. We have a quick look at the position change, just so you guys can see the movers and shakers from the first couple of laps. As Swayze did mention, Cam being the big, big winner here, up four places, up into second place as it stands, a second and a half away from Constant Ryan, and two, uh, 0.26 ahead of Tom Gorian. Vapid jumps one, Leclerc drops three, Kislesko drops two. And Christo has overtaken both Papa Goose and Big Will to move up to eight, with the other two guys dropping down a position each, respectively. Let's get the tyres back on screen so we can see what tyres everyone's on. Vapid makes a move on Tom Gorian. If he made that, made, made that stick, no, Tom Gorin has still got it. Is Vapid going to look to try and go around the outside? Big, big lock up there by Vapid, though. And that is just going to entice Tom Gorin to be able to pull away now from that McLaren driver. As we come up good to... Defensive uh, line there from Tom Gorin. Yeah, very, very good defensive line there. Up to uh, my most hated corner of this track. And uh, according to Swayze, it's big wheels too. Well, the exit of it is anyway. Christo picks up a three second penalty in there. There we go. So you had Christo in your first penalty bingo, guys. You can cross that one off. Because Lesko doing his very best to hold on to the back. Oh, he's had a moment. He touched the crease. Got... Oh, yes. Oh, 
Wow. Jeez. That yeah, was brown yeah. trousers. I wasn't on. That was death. Yeah. Yeah. That was death. That was. Vapid with the RS is gonna move to the right to try and make the moves on Tom Gorian. Tom Gorian tried to put a little bit of pressure on Vapid, but Vapid has been able to hold on to it, and will obviously get DRS because it is a double detection, uh, the double activation zone here at Hungary. One at, uh, one detection point, but two activation points, which is something that a lot of the drivers seem to forget. Sways. Of course, on exit of the final corner, it, or sorry, on entry into the final corner, is your detection zone, your detection point. And a lot of people think there's yeah. another one on the straight for the second one, but it's not. It is that same yeah. detection point from the final corner. So what you may yeah, see, guys, you'll see a lot. There's of... a few, isn't it? Yeah. There's, a, there's another track that does that as well. I can't quite remember for the life of me right now, but yeah, you're definitely right with that. This is one of those single zones for multiple DRS activations so you will probably see a lot of drivers if they know that they can potentially make a move on another driver they'll purposely sit behind them on the run up to the final corner so we'll watch tom gorian because you'll see the white line on track there tom gorian's just driven over it that is your detection point so from that point onwards you will get drs twice vapid 118 force that's the fastest lap of the grand prix as we start lap 5, Papa Goo's getting close to Christo in the Haas. Can he get the move done on the Red Bull driver? Not able to make that move just yet. But of course, we'll get DRS for the second zone as well. Very, very smooth cornering there by Goose. Oh, as get a little bit, little bit twitchy on the exit of T1 there. And that I think did affect his ability to try and make that pass on Christo. So for now, stays in P8. Uh, it's going to be a very, very, very interesting race. Um, obviously, I mean, Ryan does have a two-second lead, but he, you know, he is on the medium to Cam, who's on the hards. But especially between Cam, Vapid, Gore, Tom Gorin and Leclerc, where you have two of them on the hards and two of them on the mediums, this, that battle, although it may not you see it unfold on track, because of the difference in strategy, it will come back together at the end, you know, it, with the two different strategies. I think we're going to have quite an interesting race long battle between those four. Yeah, definitely. You've got to really keep an eye. So the guys that are on the mediums, when their mediums start to fall off, granted, yes, it will then bring the hard runners into play. But then on the flip side of that, when it is flipped and we come towards the end of the race and the guys who started on the hard tyres move on to those mediums, the guys who started on the mediums are going to be on those more gripped in hard tyres so we jump up to Vapid not able to make any moves on Cam yet because Lesko makes a move on Big Will and obviously we'll I get mean, the second set of DRS to pull away from that Renault driver pros and cons to, to both obviously I would say that um, I would say the softer to the harder way round of doing it your pro is that you obviously you get the undercut whereas if you go the other way you're not going to get an undercut, but you, when you do get the faster tyre, you've got it at a point where the car has got a lot, lot less fuel in it. So, it, one, it will last you longer, and two, you can just extract that much more speed from it as well. Yeah, you can. Of course, the lower fuel load, which will also mean less load on the tyres, which means those tyres, most importantly, all important, those tyres towards the end of the race will not wear as quickly. Don't get us wrong, they will still wear, but they will not wear as quickly as what they would do for the guys who've started the race on those faster tyres. So Goose, again, under pressure from Kislesko now, looking to try and make that move on Christo. Still not able to make it back. Kislesko very, very wide behind Papa Goose. You can see Kislesko pull to the right. Under some extreme pressure as well from T.S. Leclerc at the moment. Is Lesko is going to make that move on Papa Goose stick. Both will have DRS, but unfortunately, it's not going to help Papa Goose too much because Lesko moves up to P8. As you can see, TS Leclerc is within a third of a second of Tom Goring. We'll look to try and put pressure on that racing point driver. Kirby picks up a three second time penalty now as well. 
We are a fifth of the what? way into this race. There's Papa Goose with a three second time penalty again. Well, sorry, as well. Because yeah, let's go, you know, obviously doing well, trying to fight his way back up through the pack after his moment earlier on. Luckily enough, he didn't sustain any damage from that spin. He managed to avoid all contact with other cars on the wall somehow. So he can, if he can get his head down, try his best to get back into the race. I mean, other drivers around him now are starting to pick up penalties as well, which is always a bonus for him. That's indeed, let's see, because let's go. It's a lot closer to Christo than Papa Goose has been in a Whoa, in recent on lap. Cam. Jump up to Vapid. Gets that move done on oh, Cam. As Leclerc also gets the move done on Tom Gorian. So double overtake there. There's four drivers I, I mentioned earlier between the two different strategies and tyres. It's, it's, it's going to be brilliant. I've already, you've already Ooh, seen two like me. Let's go. Gets the move done on Christo who goes deep into T1. And that is Kislesko up into P7 now. Kislesko, as Sway said. Oh, has a bit of a twitch, though. Yeah, bit yeah. of a twitch there yeah, coming out of T3. I mean, his tyres, I mean, obviously he's starting on the mediums. Um, but his tyres, because he's been round, you know, they will be a lot more in a scrub state now than those who have just kept it on track. Yeah, tyre wear is definitely going to start being an issue for Kislesko earlier than it will be for those other guys that were on those that have started on those medium tyres because of that spin. I mean, speaking of which, I know um, I don't know whether it's actually a thing in this game or the next game. Yeah, I know I hear they've um, added tyre delamination into the <coughs> up and coming Formula One game, but. I'm just wondering whether it's possible to flat spot your tyres, like when you slide them like that. On the new game? On any of them, I don't really know whether that's a flip thing. Uh, I don't think it's a thing on here, but I can confirm that it is on the new one. You can flat spot you them as well as You can flat spot your cars. Or you can Ooh, flat spot your tyres. that's going to have a new element for the ABS users then in the next game. Yep! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. We'll see how people are going now. Constant Ryan, um, he's checked out of it, any size. He has. I mean, uh, of course, Rapid was behind Cam for, you know, quite a while. Um, so he wasn't able to use his mediums to keep up with Ryan. But, you know, the bad start will do that to you. Cam earned that place and, you know, he's doing well to stick as close as what he is. I mean, he's... At the end of the day, he's only, what, five seconds back from Cam, from Ryan. And, you know, we'll have to see how much Cam can bring that back later on in the race. No way I would say it's over until we see when the hard runners come in and what the gap's like after they come out. Yeah, for And, of sure. course, a safety car could change everything in between time. Safety car can definitely change things here in Hungary. With 10 cars on track, the likelihood for a safety well. car is slim. But, strange things have happened in Formula 1. So we shall Especially see. in eSports, one that one. Exactly. Papa Goose still trying to make that move on Christo. He's unable to get past him, but this could be his best run so far. In fact, Fabian is just managing to break the DRS in that open oh, no, just It's very close between the two of them. If you can break it before... The, the activation zone, I feel like Vapid may have a chance of pulling away while he's still got a bit of life left in those mediums. Yep, definitely is nothing. No move done yet by Mr. Papa Goose. Whoa, oh, Papa Goose! Oh, Whoa! That's a little bit of a spinola. Because let's go pick up a penalty for corner cutting at the same time there. He did indeed. That unfortunately, we'll put Papa Goose back down to uh, last place now, P10. For Papa Goose in the Haas. I do like the fact that he has changed the number of his car to 47. He is F1 2020's version of Mick Schumacher. But I will say, going through turn four, he was looking a little bit more like Nikita Mazepin than Mick Schumacher. Very true. <laughs> Let's see whether Will can make oh, him. Oh, no! Tom Gorham, gone. He's, he's lost it on the exit. Then he's like that. He's took damage, heavy damage there for Tom Gorham. Luckily enough, he's, 
he's one of the calls that slotted on the mediums. I mean, if that had been a start on the hards, that would at this point would have been absolutely devastating because then you know there's no way he could have gone on another set of hards and a set of mediums wouldn't have made it to the end. So he'd have been looking at an extra stop. Yeah, he would have another I mean, three seconds on penalty there for Papa Goose. At this this point, do you think it's still viable for hards to make it? It's probably going to add an extra six more laps onto the hard distance than what they normally should do but if he drives delicately maybe uh, yeah i suppose if he's, if he's good with his tire wear he should be all right to move on to that set of hard tires now and try and run them 25 laps to the end of the race well it'll be 24 by the time he actually comes into the pits um but we'll see we'll keep an eye on tom Gorin. we'll see if he does come into the pits he is now under pressure from kislesko We'll see if Kislesko can make the move. Uh, he mean, that is going to come in. Yeah, he's coming into the pits now, Tom Goring. So we'll keep an eye on what tyre Tom Goring goes on to. We'll jump back a couple of cars to Big Will, who is within DRS range of Christo. But similarly to Papa Goose, struggling to get past the uh, struggling to get past the Red Bull. It is hard on that racing point. It is and a new wing. New wing and hard tyres going on to Tom Gorian's car. Why do I not put my... Why do I never put myself on Do Not Disturb? I always forget to do that when I, before I'm doing stream. And there's a join the... The onboard of uh, T.S. Leclerc. I guess I'm a, a bit of a brown trouser moment. Who? I love some brown trouser cool, it's nice, but... The car just... The rear end just seems to get away from me for a split moment there. We are going to keep with Will for now. We will keep an eye on the gap by the back. Antonio Masuoso, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. Apologies for absolutely butchering your name. But welcome to Supreme Formula Racing. Hopefully you enjoy your stay here with us. If you do have any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And I'm sure we will get them answered for you as quickly as we can. Big, Big Will may be looking for a move on Christo anytime soon. He is what? going to be within it's range Friday of DRS. Saturday, Sunday, what? Don Omar Kills also following the channel. Thank you for the follows, guys. We really, really do appreciate it. Welcome to SFR. Hopefully you enjoy your stay with us. Still sweating. Cars are really struggling to try and get past Christo tonight, aren't they? Yeah, I saw a little bit of a tail slide there from Christo. Um, I think it said earlier on in the uh, in the pit stop graphic uh, lap 16 to 20. So um, obviously the medium runners now starting to get towards the end of the top life, and I think it's starting to show, especially on Christo's car at the moment. Yeah, definitely. <coughs> so it's only going to be a matter of time, I think, before Will is able to finally make that move on Christo. He has been stuck behind that Red Bull for uh, a fair while now. So. And uh, if you're Will, yeah, surely you're thinking, does. this is really hurting my chance of getting big points here. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously both drivers have still got to pit. Will, obviously, yeah, he's being hurt, but he's going to know if he can just be patient. That car's going to pit within a few laps. And at the moment, you know, all the drivers around Will have time penalties. Will doesn't. Very, very true. Will now looking to. He's got no battery life though. He can't utilize that ERS to try and assist with that move on Christo. Christo picks up another three second time penalty though. So that is uh, <coughs> going to help Will just that little bit more. Christo does like to take quite a wide line through turn three. Yeah. Or turn two, right something. I suppose it, it gives him that it does give him that better line into T3, which does and then in turn enable him the easier way of being able to defend that. So it's it's working quite well for Kristen, driving in the way that he is at the moment. Nice line through the chicane though. And that gap, you can see how well Christo got out of that chicane. He's been able to pull out the gap to over a second now to Big Will. On under um as they drivers hit the braking zone there, when I can speak English, 
the gap was only three tenths. So Christo has been able to put seven, eight tenths now on a big will. Yeah. The, the uh, second curve. Ooh, is that Leclerc? The sausage curb in there. Leclerc, Leclerc's had a spin out of T1. There's no, no damage, damage though, part, isn't it? but he has had a little spin. Let me just check. Can't see Riffin any plate. damage yep, no on damage. it. No damage. No, yep, no damage. Doesn't look like it. But yep, that is a moment, obviously, for the club. Not what he wanted. It was putting him a little bit behind, but all his faculties are intact. Get his head back down and focus on trying to reduce that gap. You know, he's going to be out for longer. But obviously, that, that extra time that he's just lost is going to hurt him some. Yeah, definitely going to... Uh, it's not going to be what C.S. Leclerc wanted. As Big Will still getting ever closer to Christo around Turn 5. This is actually the closest Will's been to Christo into this set of corners, but not able to make the move yet on that Red Bull. We'll see whether Will's able to stay within touching distance of Christo through the S-Bends now. This looks a lot smoother by Will. He's right on that gearbox of Christo. But these tyres have definitely <laughs> started really to fall got off. A better run there. Uh, I think he only got, it looked like he got a better exit because I think we're allowed to back off because I think he would have hit him in the corners. Because, the, like I said, the cornering speed now is definitely favouring the hards at the moment. Those mediums definitely at the end of the line. Kirby and Kislesko going side by side. Kislesko does make that move and moves Kislesko up to P5 now. Pit window has opened for the hard runners to go... Uh, Oh, sorry, for the medium runner, hard. sorry. To go onto the uh, hard. 16 to 23. So we'll see whether these medium runners start to uh, think about coming in. What's up, Ryan? Still keeping that five second lead <laughs> over Vapid Coop. Excuse me. Sorry. Cam, about a further two seconds back from Vapid. Ryan is in. And there we go. Constant Ryan, race leader, Vapid comes in. Stays out. Vapid stays out. Cam stays out. Leclerc. It's probably oh, Cam's on the hard, isn't it? They yeah. can't come and Leclerc on the hard. So it'll be Kislesko is the next one to watch. For the pits, at least. Have a look and see. Does Kislesko come into the pits? Nope, Kislesko stays out. Kirby comes in. And Christo, what is Christo going to do? He's the last of the hard runners. Sorry, medium runners. Ryan even. re emerges into fourth place. And Christo does come into the pits. So Big Will now is going to have that free, clean air. Let's see where Kirby is. In fact, Will could jump Kirby here. In fact, Will has jumped Kirby. Will up to P6 now. Tom Gorian passes Christo. And Papa Goose ahead of Kirby as well. Yeah, yeah, I just saw that. Yeah, around the, around the outside. Ooh, Kirby tries to go down the inside. That was a very, very interesting line. Tried to be taken by Kirby there. Um, not really sure whether that inside line was probably the way to go there, Kirby. But hopefully that hasn't damaged your car. I don't think it has. Vapid no, stays out again. Good. Vapid is staying out, so he's clearly enjoying these uh, medium tires. He's not having any issues with them at the moment. So we shall see how oh. things go. His less go stays out, even though he just had a bit of a slide. But again, mustn't be... Uh, mustn't be struggling too much on uh, those tires. You can see a little bit of... Uh, Degradation on those tyres. If you do go on board with Kislesko, you can see the line on the front left tyre there of Kislesko's Mercedes. You can see where the uh, where the discoloration is between the two uh, parts of the tyre. It doesn't seem to be affecting him too much as Kirby is now going side by side with Papa Goose into turn one. Whew. Papa Goose tries to defend the inside line, but Kirby will get DRS again off of Papa Goose. Getting very, very close to one another. Kirby is going to make that stick. Does he go Whoa, deep? Very, very deep? Goes deep, but he's able to hold on. And that's now going to potentially open the door for Tom Goring. Is Tom Goring going to try and make a move on Papa Goose?
He's already lost one position oh. to Kirby. Could he be losing a position to Tom Gorin as well? Tom Gorin does pick up a three-second time penalty, though. It's a little bit too wide on the it's exit. Really nice exit it's right there behind Fabregas now. Of course, Tom Gorin still trying to recover from... He was doing well earlier on, took that spin, took heavy damage and had to pit earlier on. Tom Gorin has... Vapid and Leclerc both in. Go to the end. Vapid and Leclerc both in the pit. And Constant Ryan has made the undercut work because he is ahead of both of them. That's interesting. I mean... Leclerc pitted really early off of the hards. So, you know, he's going to try... Is he going to take mediums to the end? He has going to take mediums. He's going to try and take those mediums to the end. 15 laps? Well, 16 laps? 16 yeah, it should laps. be doable. It should be doable. Kislesko again stays out, though. So Kislesko is the longest running medium wearer now. And he's ahead of Vapid. So we'll see. So it gives us a, a good idea as to uh, what. The pace is going to look like for Kislesko. Constantly watching behind. He looks like he is Poot. struggling. He's really he's starting to him. score trouble now, though. So we... you look how much faster Vapid looks from on board. He's on the hard tire. Vapid is very, very uh, quickly closing in exists, on please. Kislesko. Is he going to look for the move down the inside? Little lock up by Vapid. But he is going to make that move work around the outside because Lesko does back out of it. A great move. Because Lesko backs up because I'm surely. assuming. Yep, surely. there it is. Because Lesko does come into the pit. That was why he backed out of the move into the penultimate corner. Obviously knowing that if he, if Vapid had gone around the outside of him, he wouldn't have got the line into the pits. Because so, uh, Lesko now has, hards. in the meantime, that we didn't see Peter and gone off of the hards onto his mediums now as well. He has indeed. So we've got T.S. Leclerc and Big Will on the mediums. Everyone else on that those hards. is on his way in. And Kiz Lesko you know, is, is on his coming way out, out now. Kirby is coming down the street, but I don't think he's going to be able to get him. Five second penalty for Papa Goose there, speeding into the pit lane. That is not what you want. We have a quick look at that penalty situation there. Papa Goose now sitting on 11 seconds worth of penalties. Christo on six with Kislesko and Tom Gorin and Kirby both sitting on three as it stands. So big winner here could be Big Will. If he can uh, try and catch up a little bit to Christo. I mean, he's only, what, he's only a second behind Christo and he's on the faster time now. And then of course it is trying to then try and see if we can catch up to Tom Gorian because there is a bit of a gap between uh, Christo and Tom Gorian. 14 and a half seconds as it stands at the moment. You can see Big Will is really starting to uh, to gain now on Christo. Vapid goes fastest. Christo has a bit of a moment into the Leclerc chicane there. That. Yeah, Leclerc yeah. goes fast. 17-1 by TES Leclerc. As it stands, Cam leads the Grand Prix. Yet to pit, though. I mean, you know, obviously, while he's in the fight, you know, if he hasn't got the time to be able to do the extra pit and he hasn't got the time in the tyres, the reverse strategy at the moment is he's got that extra chance of getting, uh, you know, Leclerc that faster lap, fastest lap extra point. Yeah, for sure. For sure, we'll see what Cam does now. He's been on these hard tyres for 20 laps. He's been on these tyres longer Surely. than anyone else has. Let's see whether Cam does decide now is the time to come in. No, Cam stays out. Surely he's going to want to put the medium in. You don't think he's going to try and go for the softs, do you? Um, I mean, if the, if the mediums can do 16, surely the softs can do 8, 9. I would have thought so, yeah. 8, 9, I mean, maybe 10 at a push. Well, he's only three laps away from that, from ten. I mean, three laps, and you can, you know what I mean? I think you, it's yeah. doable. It is doable. It's dirty. It's <laughs> very dirty, but we'll see. I mean, it could, it, could it, it may guarantee him that extra. I mean, surely if he goes to the soft, he's got that extra point off of Leclerc at the moment. Leclerc has it now for the fastest lap, but surely. If he goes to the soft, he's the only person to run them in the race. I mean, you'd think, you'd have to assume it. 
Gordon Gorey looking to make a move on Kirby now pulls to the right hand side on the run up to turn one this is going to be a nice easy move here for Tom Gorey in the racing point around Kirby on the inside we'll get that second bite of DRS as well to help pull away as Will picks up a three second time penalty that's not going to oh, help the big man well. that's not going to help the big Definitely man in not. any way shape or form and we'll say that just needs the top four drivers now the only drivers that are penalty free in this ring I think Cam's come in. Cam is in. Cam is in. I just noticed that the gap between Cam and Ryan was starting to drop. I think it's too early for Soft. I think he's going to have to go mediums. It is mediums. Yep. His medium tyres going on to, Const uh, to Cam's car. So we'll see. Constant Ryan will now regain the lead of this Grand Prix. Yeah, I think Rapid might get him. Rapid. Where does get him. The, I think Cam's going to come out in front of Leclerc. Obviously, Leclerc didn't have that moment earlier on. Yep. But Cam out how ahead much time of he managed to gain back? It, it was nine seconds, I think, he dropped back after that spin. And now down to three. A good stint there from Leclerc. The very, moment, to be very, able to try and bring that back. Yeah, very, very good run there by TES Leclerc too. That's why it says try and close up on that gap that he did gain after having that little spin earlier on in the grand prix but of course now cam on the freshest fastest tire on the track so it'll be interesting to see whether he is able to uh close that gap to vapid and to try and put pressure on Ryan. three seconds to vapid for cam and i'll tell you to live about eight and a half seconds to ryan so uh then I think there's enough laps left if you can extract more speed out of those tyres. They'll definitely go the distance. Definitely will Papa Goose looking to potentially go around the outside of Christo into turn two. Gets a much better exit of the corner into turn three. Pushes Christo a little bit wide, but Christo does lose out on that position. Does yield to Papa Goose in the half, and that is Papa Goose up into P9. And now has to try and bridge a five second gap to Christo if he wants to try and hold on to that P9. I mean, it's plausible. As like I say, he's on the front, he's on the softer compound tire, you know, there's enough, we've got 11 laps. You could be able to pull five seconds in there if, you can, if you're constant enough, like Ryan. Well, yeah, and talking about uh, making gaps or closing gaps, Cam has been able to close about four tenths from Vapid on mm. that first lap following the uh, pit stop onto the medium tyre. The gap now down to just under three seconds. Tom yeah, Gorian picks up another three up. second penalty, though. I estimate a minimum of about eight tenths a lap he needs to try and gain. Gonna be a, it's gonna be a challenge, but I'm sure it's one that Cam's up for. Well, I know Cam was in the chat earlier, and uh, if I quickly roll up to uh, when Cam came into chat, and I can quote what he said. Uh, I asked him, "Are you ready for tonight?" He went, "Yep, definitely ready for tonight. Ready to show what I'm made of." And uh, well, he's definitely doing that well, at the moment, sitting in P3. He has a fresh attire. But he did not. He did not go faster than Jamie's current fastest lap. GF Eclipse still holds the fastest lap. It does indeed. I'm intrigued to see what that time was by Cam though. Let's have a look. It was a 117.6 by Cam. We'll just have a quick look at the fastest lap. It was a 117.1 by Leclerc. So he's half a second off of TS Leclerc's fastest lap as it stands. So a bit of work for Cam to do, but he is closing that gap on Vapid Coup. That gap is now only 2.1 seconds. It's three seconds that at the start purple. of the lap. There we go, there we go. There's purple, purple two for Cam. He wasn't, and it wasn't purple one, but... He purple may two have a and potential purple three could do it for him. If, if not now, if he can get into the DRS, maybe on that lap would help him to maybe sneak that extra point away from Jamie. There on 17.4 by uh, by Cam, so he is improving, but not enough yet to uh, to get that fastest lap off Jamie just yet. 
but we will still keep an eye on that gap between Cam and Vapid Coot. It is dropping lap by lap, corner by corner. You can see Cam is closing on Vapid now. You can see Vapid ahead of Cam. We go on board with Cam. That car just ahead of him, that is Vapid. That is Vapid Coot in the McLaren. That is second place on track for Cam. It is very much doable now for Cam in the Mercedes yeah, to make this move stick in the next couple of laps if he's able to continue to take time off of Vapid. Chloe, Rebecca in the what. chat. Good evening, Chloe. Hope you are well. Sorry, Karen. It, once he gets to within a second, I mean, it, it'll feel longer for him now, just getting it down to that second. He's already got what, down to 1.5. Half, yep. half, half, yeah, half a second once he gets it into the, into the DRS. With the fresher tyres and the softer compound, I feel like that, that rem last remaining second will just disappear within the lap, either. Yeah, it will indeed. So we'll see now. Cam can see Vapid using all of that ERS that he has left in his battery, running it down to pretty much zero. You can see it's now under a second and a half sways. He is really starting to close in on Vapid. What, nine laps or so left to go in this Grand Prix? And with him closing in on Vapid, it's also closing the gap to Ryan. Because the gap to Ryan now for Cam is only 6.1. It started at what? We said 9. It was about 8.5 or 9, yeah. yeah. So Cam's but really done some good he, work. He is, but he needs to close that gap just a little bit quicker. And then it's how fast he can break away in the fresh air in front of Vapid at the moment. Uh, of course, each lap that goes by, the wind comes ever closer to Ryan. Does indeed, down to 1.2 now. He's just got two tenths to try and make up. A tenth to make up now. Can Cam get close enough to Vapid to make a move? He's not going to get oh, DRS this the lap. Line? It's, whoa, no, it's, it's not. It was about three hundredths. He was three hundredths off DRS. He'll get it next lap. But next That's lap for sure. sure. We, it's got to be next lap. Surely Cam makes that move on Vapid Coup. We're going to stick with this battle, guys, because it is the closest battle that we have got on track. As Christo picks up another three-second time penalty, so that's not going to help Christo in any way, shape, or form. Let's have a look at that time penalty situation now. It's nine seconds to Christo, 11 to Papa Goose, and Christo is six and a half seconds back from Papa Goose. So Crystal will unfortunately stay P10 as it stands. And you can see now it is almost under a second. Surely it's got to be this lap sway that Cam gets inside the RS. You would have thought so. With how much he's brought... Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. He's, in, he's inside it. He had a moment, but he's inside it. So it's now just out to Cam to stay within a second of Vapid Coot. You can see Purple Sector 2 for WRS Cam. You can tell he was pushing. No, at that moment proved it. You can see he's really closed up to Vapid now. He's going to get DRS. There is the line. He has DRS on the McLaren. We'll see. Can he improve on his lap time? It's a 17.5, so he still can't beat Leclerc's fastest lap yet. It won't be that lap. It'll be this one where he's had it down the straight and up the next up the next straight that he might have a shot at the... Uh, the lap time, especially with all the toe that he's going to get from Vapid as well in this lap, would be that much closer. Yeah, so we'll definitely keep an eye on Cam's lap time. Keep an eye on the top right-hand corner. It's got right to be this corner. lap, now or never. I feel like the tyre life will go and you won't have a chance of getting near that again. Yeah, I think if Cam's going to make that move on Vapid and try and close that gap to Ryan, he needs to make the move this lap. And as Sway says, he wants that fastest lap from Leclerc. He has to do it this lap. Now half a second, under half a second, four tenths now. Separating Cam and Vapid Coot. He can literally see him. Vapid Coot can probably feel Cam breathing down his neck. Cam goes a little bit wide there. Yellow flag in sector three. It's Christo. Christo's had a spin. And that could affect Cam. Because, of course, he's going to have yellow flags. He's going to have to slow down and he can't overtake Vapid. Green flag now, uh, though. Yeah, yeah, we are back under racing conditions. And we'll see now. Be a better lap time. 
It's not. 17.6. 17, That's slower than it was last Great. lap. It looks like he's getting a run. Is he going to go for it? Oh, Very the well there defended. The the there. Fantastically defended there by Vapid. Knew that it was going to happen. He was going to come in. Leclerc's boxed, Swayze. Leclerc's on softs. Leclerc, yeah. Leclerc, I think, well, he's got potentially seen the issue. Let's go behind him. Yeah, I think he's potentially seen the fact that Cam is uh, closing on Vapid and was getting faster and faster, especially with the fact that he's going to now start getting the BRS and that toe from Vapid Coot. So Leclerc has reacted, gone onto the soft tyre to try and con consolidate that fastest lap. You can see Cam's starting, yeah, I mean, Cam's starting to drop away. I mean, Cam's starting to drop away now. Five. Yeah, he hasn't been below a 17.5, and I feel like I feel like Jamie had that in the bag anyway. But he's got the safety cushion. He's got, he had the time gap backwards because let's go. It didn't affect him. He obviously didn't feel like he could catch Cam on track. So why not? Yeah, why not indeed? Let's see now, Cam without. Having to worry about slowing down for anything. It's, again, it's even slower. It's a 17, it's an 18, 5. Yeah, the, 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 the life's gone out of the time. Tires now. have definitely started to, uh, it's definitely gone now. Five laps left of this Grand Prix. Constant Ryan has pretty much led from, in fact, Constant Ryan has led from the start other than when he came into the pits. This has been a very, very comfortable race for Constant Ryan. We will see whether Cam is able to get himself past Vapid Coot and up into second place. In this Grand Prix, he's been trying for a long, long time now. But unable to make that move as of yet. Go a quick look at Vapid's tyres. Vapid is having no real issues on those tyres. Speaking of tyres, I look at. Tom Gorin obviously won that damage in that early, extra early pit stop off of the mediums. 18 laps now on these medium tyres, or hard tyres. 18 laps on those hards, of course. Cam did do 21 before he came in and pitted on lap 22. No, later than that, sorry. He's been on these for, uh, these will be eight laps now as he starts lap 32. So yeah, 20, yeah, 23 laps and then came in on lap 24 to put those medium tyres on. So, I mean, another five laps. It, it is doable. Tom Gorin is able to hold on for these hard tyres. We will have a quick look at his tyres. Not looking too horrific for Tom Gorin. There's Leclerc, 17, uh, 15, 7. Just, yep, no, that's fastest lap is mine, Cam. Don't even bother, mate. So Cam knows now that if he wants to get some extra points tonight, it's going to have to be by overtaking Vapakut on track and getting P2. He's, he's right there. He, that's the thing, though, Swayze. He's been right there for a few laps now. I feel like he may just need to maybe knock the ERS into lean or something and then just suffer an extra lap behind Vapid, but just gaining that little bit of extra ERS and then push it all into one push lap and that, yeah, it's a bit try of, and save the, the last bit of potential in the tyres just for that one last push lap. Yeah, a bit of a lock up there by Vapid coming into the penultimate corner now. We'll see as the drivers come down the main straight. You can see that Cam just does not have enough battery to try and make that move on Vapid. For this one lap now, I'll, I'll just leave it off or, or right down in lo the lowest it will go and then just use the DRS here, the slipstream, and just try and st stick as close to him. And as long as you don't fall back with about, you know, six, six, seven temps, you should still be all right, you know, for the amount of battery you're going to gain, it might be worth the sacrifice. Yeah, definitely. Try and hold off using, try and refrain from using that battery to give you that extra push on that DRS coming into the penultimate lap, lap 34, when we start it in uh, about 30 seconds time. It's definitely what I'd be doing anyway, but uh, doesn't look as Cam is looking to do that. Cam is still lingering around that 10% mark on that ERS. Yep. Because all the while, yeah. Cam is sticking behind the Yep. 
all the time Cam staying behind Vapid is just making it easier and easier for Constant Ryan to secure this win here in Hungary. The gap's now up to eight well, tenths. You say that, but I mean, unless Ryan is on a slow down, <laughs> the gap has come down. Yeah, yeah, it has come down, but I think Ryan's probably probably taking his foot off the gas a little bit. Probably trying to make it interesting for himself. Purposely slowing down, so he's actually got a little bit of a battle towards the end of the race. Because uh, Ryan it, doing Ryan things. It has been very, very smooth sailing for Constant Ryan this race. I don't think he's really had to uh, break a sweat, so to speak. All right. From on board, Ryan, Constant Ryan is visible to to Vapid. He is. He is, you can see mm -hmm. him there, just coming out of shot on Vapid's car. So you would think that with... Oh. Well, Vapid's tyres, actually, yeah, Vapid's tyres are two laps fresher than Ryan. They are. And that gap is starting to close now between Vapid and Constant Ryan. Constant Ryan coming round right. the final that corner for the penultimate time now. need just that, that bit too much of a gap to manage in one lap. <laughs> I mean, we've seen Cam struggle to get past Vapid at the moment it, with many laps at it. So to catch the, that gap and get Ryan, I, I think is a very, very, very high bar to set for one lap. Yeah, it is indeed. It's going to be a bit of a challenge. But this is it. Final lap of the Grand Prix. Constant Ryan leading still. Just under two and a half seconds ahead of Vapid Coop. Interestingly... All top three cars have their fuel lights flashing. They do indeed. You can see the red light flashing bottom right hand corner of the screen. Leclerc not yet. Leclerc has uh, been able to save a little bit of extra fuel. You can definitely see those red lights flashing which means these guys are very very close to running out of fuel. Uh, Constant Ryan now coming through Sector 3, the final sector of this Hungarian Grand Prix. This has been a relatively easy job for Constant Ryan tonight. Only really lost out on the lead of the race whilst he was boxing. But he comes round the final corner now and Constant Ryan crosses the line to win the Hungarian Grand Prix. Vapid comes in in second place. Cam not able to get past Vapid and finishes in third place. And we'll see. Top three finished where they were on track. No penalties involved. That's what we like indeed, to see. Indeed. T.S. Leclerc is coming to cross the line now. T.S. Leclerc finishes in fourth place. Drives past the um, broken Constant Ryan as he did his uh, trademark weave as he crosses the line and careened himself into the pit wall. And decided that he didn't want that front right wheel anymore. He'd driven it for 18 laps. Decided he didn't want it anymore. Because Lesko comes in and finishes in P5. Christo crosses the line in P10. Tom Gorian finishes in P6. Kirby will come around the final corner now to finish in P7. We will jump back now to Mr. Big Will. No such horrible flashbacks for Big Will here tonight. Finishes in 8th place. We're just waiting for Papa Goose now. Takes the punt over the corner. Comes round to take the final corner of the Grand Prix. And this is going to wrap everything up. Papa Goose crosses the line. And finishes in ninth place. Well, Karen, you said it at the start of the broadcast. Unfortunately, tonight there are only 10 drivers. But you said if they all finish, they all get point and that is exactly what has happened not one retirement from tonight's race not one retirement and not one safety car of any kind sways not even a virtual we love to see it it is we exactly it. what we love to see so i believe cam still doesn't have a microphone so we won't be able to get cam into the party but we will try and get constant ryan and vapid coot in just let you guys watch the podium celebrations there as Constant Ryan in the Williams lifts that trophy trophy for winning the Hungarian Grand Prix. Do you have a driver of the day today, Karen? 
You know what? I'm going to... I'm going to give it to... I'm going to give it to Cam. I will give it to Cam. Um, I know he didn't catch Vapid in the end, but... Yes, bear in mind, Cam started in sixth place. Got off to an absolutely storming start. Got himself up into P2. Early on in the race. So, yeah, Cam gets my driver of the day. Uh, what about for yourself, Mr. Size? Um, you know, there were some impressive moves from both of overtakes today. Um, but I feel like, you know, for the start, the amount of places gained and the consistency, he also ran the reverse strategy. I'm going to have to side with you and give it to Cam. There we go. WRS Cam picks up driver of the day from both myself and Mr. Swayze. Let's just try and get Constant Ryan and Vapid into a party before they disappear. The invites have been sent. There we go. Invites have been sent by Mr. Swayze. There is Constant Ryan jumping into the party to join us. And there is Mr. Vapid Coot as well. GG's in the chat from Mr. Leclerc. Passed across to both the drivers who have joined us in the party. And uh, similarly to last week on stream, we will play the national anthem of the Republic of Ireland for Mr. Constant Ryan, followed by the national anthem of the winning constructor, which of course is Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthems of the Republic of Ireland for our race winner, Constant Ryan, along with the British national anthem for the winning constructor of Williams. We have been joined in the party, as I say, by Vapid Coot and by Constant Ryan, the drivers who finished in second and third. We will start, of course, with you, Vapid. Congratulations on that P2, my friend. Thank you. A couple of extra laps and you would have caught Ryan? Yeah, I'm, I'm a bit annoyed. I was a bit closer to him at the start of the race. If um, I didn't get my lap validated in quality, I feel I could have had maybe won that. But could have, should have, you know, you know, the outcome's the outcome. What it is. So congrats to Ryan on the win. Um, and yeah, just I basically just had 18 laps of full qualifying on that hard stint. So and I just I seen the gap was just coming down and coming down const constantly, and I was just hoping there might have been a, a snap chance to just get him at the end. But um, yeah, just too too many laps, uh, too short. But um, yeah, for the the race was a bit longer. I think I could have had a chance, but yeah, I just need to take up the chain and move on. Yeah, for sure. And of course, all the time you were trying to catch Constant Ryan, you had Cam in your rearview mirror the entirety of that time there, trying to get past you, but Cam just couldn't get past. Were you worried that there was ever going to be a chance that he could get past, or did you feel quite comfortable, uh, quite confident staying in front of him? 
Um, well, I, I knew maybe at some point he maybe could have came past, but I knew he's given up on hard tyre. His tyres were going to drop off eventually, and I did make myself really good towards tyre saving, so I was able to go a few more laps, more than what Ryan did on the mediums, which kind of allowed me to just do 18 laps, full qualifying pace on the hard. So I knew I'd, his tyres would drop off eventually, so I did kind of, in a way, feel confident going through the corners, but on the straight, when he was getting the good exits from the final corner, I knew he was going to launch attack, so it was 50-50, like I said, I just defended as best I could and just kept my head down and kept plugging away at it, so nothing really more to add, so. Yeah. Well, it's another confident uh, podium finish for you. Next week, we are off to, if my memory serves me correctly, the wonderful world of Canada. The uh, circuit de Gilles Villeneuve. Your thoughts on Canada? Uh, absolutely despise it. It should be getting been torture, been it. Yeah, I hate it. So, <laughs> well, that's going to be uh, nice and interesting for next week, then, ladies and gents. <laughs> but uh, well, congratulations on that, PT. So, is there anything to add from you, bud? Yeah, yeah. Man, massive congratulations. Another great podium for you, bud. A few great overtakes today as well. Uh, this is another solid performance, mate. Congrats. Thank you. And moving on to our race winner now, Mr. Constant Ryan. It's another win for you there, Constant Ryan. And uh looked to be quite a smooth race for yourself. Wasn't really uh, many issues for you going forward. Um, was it as comfortable as it looked on string? Uh, I just kind of decided to play it safe. Uh, on the first start on hard, I was like, kind of, well, thank you for giving me the chance to lead in turn one. And yeah, I got a mega start, and I just knew then all to do was just manage a pace, not do anything stupid, and just kind of keep something in reserve. And then I decided to go for an earlier undercut because I was really worried about Cam. But when he stayed out the extra laps, I was kind of like, what is he doing? He could have easily, I thought he could have easily won that if he would have boxed a little bit earlier onto the medium. So kind of surprised. Um, so that kind of gave me the win in a way um, with Fafa behind I was just watching the gap the whole time and just thinking I was thinking okay close by 4 tenths that lap there's only 10 laps left if I respond this much next lap I'll be grand so I kind of kept on doing that and I kind of knew I was I, I knew I was safe I felt comfortable that way but yeah um, fun on track I really enjoyed it that quality lap was yeah quite fun um, but yeah it's a good race enjoyed it yeah, it was definitely a, a very very good race so similar to uh what I asked Vapid, uh, if that race had carried on a couple, an extra couple of laps, do you think you would have been fine, or do you think Vapid would have been able to get you? They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's all but, uh, that I was managing it. Like, I, I knew I'd be safe at the end, because the hard tires, you last pretty well. Um, but yeah, I was just kind of expecting the, the, track to end, the race to end when I did, so I wasn't too worried, to be honest. I just kind of wanted to make sure I didn't run wide and get a, a stupid penalty that that was the main thing i was looking out for because i know this track it's very hard to overtake especially on the same tires and even if you're similar age it's, it's just a nightmare to overtake around there yeah it's definitely a bit of a struggle to overtake on a few portions of this track but it's back-to-back -back wins for you over, over the last couple of races moving into canada next week uh you're making it a trifecta uh, I'm the same as that, but I hate Canada with a passion. It's just awful. Um, especially the last chicane, where it's just like, basically, how much you can cut the track and get away with it, which is just kind of ridiculous in a way. But that's track limits in these games. But uh, yeah, not looking forward to it, to be honest. I know the Clark likes Canada. I'm fairly sure he goes pretty well there. So yeah, it'll be interesting. You Vapid hating the track, it'll go. <laughs> it will be indeed. So is anything from you before we wrap up, my friend? Yeah, I mean... Obviously, I'm just going to touch on something that you've not mentioned. The wet, the qualifying today, you know, full wets, first time we've seen full wets in a long time, and uh, not even that seemed to phase you. Yeah, it was nice to see like a qualifying session where you don't have to do one lap, because I just hate that. Um, you should be able to choose more than one compound of tires in terms of mediums, but uh, yeah, I was really happy actually when I saw it, to be honest, especially when I was going to intermediates, because my setup kind of worked in all conditions, but the wet it was a little bit sketchy. I don't know if you saw, but I was just like drifting through every corner on the full west. When I got into the inters, it just felt really nice. So, yeah, it's it's great, I do like the wet in this game. It was a great performance from you in qualifying, a great lap, great pole, and yet again, fantastic flawless race from you. Congratulations on, on the race weekend, mate. Well done. 
Thank you. There we go. TS is in chat saying, Oi, leave Canada alone. <laughs> so, uh, no. <laughs> ja terrible. Jamie trying to defend Canada. Jamie has also subscribed with his Prime. Thank you so much for using your Prime on SFR, Jamie. It is really, really, really appreciated. Um, we are going to look to try and get some SFR style emotes done as well shortly, guys, for SFR. So if you have got Twitch Prime and you do feel like you want to drop it on a channel and you want to drop it on SFR, we would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Emotes will be coming soon. We promise. You can then go into other streams and spam SFR emotes wherever you go. But that is going to bring us for now to the end of our Grand Prix and our stream for this evening. A massive, massive thank you as always to all of you for popping in. And as we say, guys, if you do want to, um, if you want to get involved in the ACC League, the Assetto Corsa Competizione League that we do have coming up very, very shortly here on SFR. If you are part of the Discord, go and have a look at the driver signing section of Discord. You will see a new sign-up sheet for ACC. Please be sure to fill that in and we will get you added into the ACC League. Hopefully, when we can get a few more numbers in, we will be looking to set an official start date for the ACC League. It will be on a Friday night starting at 8 p.m. BST. But until next time, next Saturday, myself and Swayze will be here taking you through the action from Canada. Canada. But until then, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. From myself, Kieran Ryan 92 and TES Swayze, this has been SFR Round 16 in Season 4. Thank you for watching, guys, and good night. Good night, all.